Chapter 2 Accountability in the public sector Content 1. Purpose 2. Introduction 3. Concept of accountability in the public sector 4. Fiscal transparency 5. IMF Code of Good Practices and Fiscal Transparency 6. Conditions that facilitate the promotion of public accountability 7. Measures to enhance public accountability 8. Why there still exists no effect public accountability in Nigeria 9. Chapter Review 10. Worked Examples Accountability in the Public Sector Purpose After studying this chapter, readers will be able to a. Explain the concept of accountability and fiscal transparency b. Enumerate the IMF Code of Good Practices and Fiscal Transparency c. Discuss conditions that facilitate the promotion of public accountability and d. Comment on public sector accountability measures and practices in Nigeria. Introduction There are 36 states and 774 local governments, each of which are allocated allocation resources every month, aside from major allocation to the federal government, without commensurate provision of the public with adequate social amenities. The chapter differentiates between accounting in the public sector and private sector and the concept of public accountability. Concept of accountability in the public sector. Accountability is an obligation to answer for the execution of one's assigned responsibilities. It is the requirement to provide explanation about the stewardship of public money and how this money has been used. Accountability comprises two distinct components A. Rendering of account B. Holding to account Rendering of account It is by rendering of account that the information about the behavior of a public organization can be obtained. This means that without rendering of account, there can, no be, there can be no accountability. Holding to account this involves the exercise of judgment and power over public officials. Public accountability can be achieved only if those who receive the accounts have power and ability to take actions on the basis of those accounts. Accountability is not just about the responsibility of public officers and institutions to the people they support to serve, but also includes a willingness on the part of the office holder to sub submit to scrutiny to scrutiny appropriate to the office is holding the principal means by which government department discharge discharge its accountability responsibility is through public reporting which leads us to the concept of fiscal transparency fiscal transparency this is the aspect of accountability which requires government to carry out all aspects of budgeting responsibilities with openness, trust, basic values, and ethical standards so that it will have nothing to hide from public. Where a government has something to hide, public reporting is more likely to be infrequent, unreliable, and less comprehensive in order to hide material facts. IMF Code of Good Practices and Fiscal Transparency The IMF stipulates a number of Code of Good Practices and Transparency. This includes A. Clarity of roles and responsibilities The government sector should be separated from the rest of the public sector and from the rest of the economy. Also, policy and management roles within the public sector should be clearly stated and publicly disclosed. Open budget process. There should be clear procedures for budget execution, monitoring and reporting. The budget preparation should be guided by well-designed macroeconomic and fiscal policy objectives. C. 
public availability of information. The public should be provided with comprehensive information on past, current, and projected fiscal activity on major fiscal risks. The central government should publish information on the level and composition of its debts and financial assets, significant non-debt liabilities and natural resources assets. Fiscal information should be presented in a way that facilitates policy analysis and promotes accountability. Assurances of integrity. One, fiscal data should meet accepted data quality standards and pub budget forecasts and updates should reflect recent revenue and expenditure trends. Underline macroeconomic development. Two, Data in fiscal reports should be internally consistent and reconciled with relevant data from other sources. Major revisions to historical fiscal data and any changes to data classification should be explained. 3. Ethical standards of behavior for public servants should be clear and made public. 4. Purchases and sales of public assets should be internally audited and audit procedures should be open to review. 5. Fiscal information should be independently scrutinized. All public finances and policies should be subject to scrutiny by national audit body or any equivalent organization that is independent of the executive. The national audit body or equivalent organization to submit all reports, including its annual report, to the legislature and publish them. Conditions that facilitate the promotion of public accountability. In addition to the two conditions of rendering of accounts and holding to account earlier discussed, the following conditions will also facilitate the promotion of public accountability. A. Existence of democratic institutions that allow for changes in leadership through free and fair elections. The assumption that public accountability will be enhanced by a civilian government replacing a military government will remain a mirage as long as the leadership can always dance to the legislature's tunes, coupled with the ability to rig elections unabated. And as such, public accountability can never be enhanced. B. The existence of leadership that genuinely believes in and committed to the notion of public accountability and we therefore ensure that the laws to safeguard public funds are enhanced are enforced irrespective of the mind of the public officer consigned. C. Public accountability needs the presence of active investigative media that will help to keep the leadership on their toes. Four. Public accountability will be enhanced if the generality of the populace do not believe the embezzlement of public funds is part of the political manifestos which the political leaders must achieve while in office at the detriment of the original manifesto. A. Urgently address the uh, issue of poverty through poverty reduction targeted government expenditures. The input impoverized and unemployed persons that really solely rely solely on political leaders for survival are more likely to view accountability of political leaders as ability to provide for their needs irrespective of the source of the money measures in place to enhance public accountability the following are the measure major major measures in place to enhance public accountability in Nigeria. A. The Fiscal Responsibility Act 2007. B. The Public Procurement Act 2007. C. The Freedom of Information Act 2011. This was signed into law on 28 May 2011. It is expected to enhance transparency and accountability in the country. D. Nigeria Code of Conduct Bureau E. Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offenses Commission ICPC F. 
Economic and Financial Crime Commission (EFCC). G. Public Account Commission of the Two Houses of the National Assembly. H. Office of Auditor General for the Federation and Office of Auditors General in the States and Local Governments. I. Nigeria Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative (NAITI) at 2007. J. Revenue and Inspectorate Departments of the Office of Accountant General of the Federation. K. Office of Special Advisor on Project Monitoring in the Presidency. Why does T exist? No effective public accountability in Nigeria. A. Nigeria still ranked lowly in Corruption Perception Index. The 2010 Transparency International Corruption Perception Index shows that Nigeria ranked 134 out of 138 countries surveyed, scoring 2.4 out of 10. <laughs> B. Nigeria still rated lowly for Budget Transparency International Budget Partnership. The 2010 Budget Index scored Nigeria 18 out of 100 compared to Ghana and Liberia with 54 and 40 points respectively. C. The continuing existence of special government funds. The special government accounts include 1. 10% cocoa levy 2. 5% sugar development levy 3. 10% rice levy, 4. 7% pot levy, 5. 2% national automotive council levy, 6. ECOWAS levy, no. 7. 1% comprehensive import supervision scheme, CISS full levy, 8. 0.5% Nigerian export supervision scheme, NESS levy, 9. 2% education pool account. 10. N. Service charge pool account. 11. EFCC recovery fund. 12. 10% steel pool levy account. 13. 100% cigarette levy. 14. Customs test charge levy pool. 15. IMPL Committee on FGN Landed Property. 16. Cement Levy Nigeria Customs Service. 17. 25% Hawks Brown Rice Levy Pool Account. 18. 30% Levy on Sanitary Pool Account. 19. 30% Levy on Wine Spirits. 20. Check operational account. 21. Pension bond redemption fund. 22. Consolidated pool account. 23. MOFI op optional account. 24. Monetization fixed assets. 25. FCT house sales proceeds account 26 monetization motor vehicle 27 65% with floor levy pool account 28 15% with grain levy pool 29 FGN signature bonus account dollar denominated D there also exist special accounts with offshoots from the Federation account. They include 1.68% FGN development of national re natural resources, 1% FGN share of derivation and ecology, 0.5% FGN stabilization account. These funds do not require appropriation from National Assembly. From National Assembly and the government does not render account to the public for the funds. The government should take a look at these special accounts 
and offload them into the national budget. Where the government decides not to offload all of them, it should render annual accounts to the National Assembly and the public on the use of accounts retained. Non-provision of penalties for breaches of fiscal responsibility act unless this particular area is addressed soon. The purpose of enacting the act may be defeated. E. F. Non-establishment of National Council on Public Procurement. Since the Public Procurement Act came into existence in 2007, the provision of the act requires the establishment of National Council on Public Procurement, which is to be headed by the Minister of Finance, has not been complied with. Complied with. This is the council that the BPP is supposed to report persistent breach of the Procurement Act to chapter review. This chapter has discussed public sector accountability. The concept of accountability was clarified and the need for fiscal transparency in public accountability rationalized. The Code of Good Practices for Public Sector Accountability and Fiscal Transparency, as spelled out by the IMF, were outlined. The general set of conditions that facilitate public sector accountability and some of the measures in place to enhance public accountability in Nigeria were then highlighted. Some reasons why there has not been effective public accountability in Nigeria were identified. Worked examples. Questions 1. A. What is accountability? B. Differentiate clearly in relation to public accountability between rendering of accounts and holding up to accounts. 2. A. What is fiscal transparency? B. Enumerate four IMF Code of Good Practices on Fiscal Transparency. 3. A. State five conditions that facilitate the promotion of public accountability. B. State six of the measures put in place by the Federal Government of Nigeria to enhance public accountability. Suggested solutions. 1. A. Accountability is a requirement to provide explanation in a record and accounting format with relevant documents, if required, on public funds received and disbursement of such funds. B. Rendering of accounts is the process of showing how public funds received has been spent while holding to accounts is the exercise of judgment and power over public officials. 2. A. Fiscal transparency. This is the aspect of accountability which requires government to carry out all aspects of budgeting responsibilities with openness, trust, basic values and ethical standards so that it will have nothing to hide from public. Where a government has something to hide, public reporting is more likely to be infrequent, unreliable and less comprehensive in order to hide material facts. B. IMF Code of Good Practices and Fiscal Transparency 1. Clarity of roles and responsibilities 2. Open budget process 3. Public availability of information 4. Assurances of integrity 3. A. Conditions that facilitate the promotion of public accountability 1. Availability of democratic institutions that allow for changes in leadership through free and fair elections. 2. The existence of leadership that genuinely believes and committed to the notion of public accountability and will therefore ensure that the laws to safeguard public funds are enforced, irrespective of the might of the public officer concerned. 3. Public accountability needs the presence of active investigative media that will help to keep the leadership on their toes. 4. Public accountability will be enhanced if the generality of the populace do not believe that investment of public funds is part of the public political manifesto which the political leaders must achieve while in office at the detriment of the original manifesto. 5. Urgently address the issue of poverty through poverty reduction targeted government expenditures. B. Measures put in place to enhance public accountability. A. The Fiscal Responsibility Act 2007. B. The Public Procurement Act 2007. 
see the Freedom of Information Act 211, which was signed into law on 28 May 2011, is expected to enhance transparency and accountability in the country. D. Nigeria Code of Bureau, Conduct Bureau. E. Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offenses Commission, ICPC. F. Economic and Financial Crime Commission, EFCC. G. Public Accounts Committee of the Two Houses of the National Assembly. H. Office of Auditor General for the Federation and Office of Auditors General in the states and local governments. I. Nigerian Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative, NEITI Act 2007. J. Revenue and Inspectorate Department of the Office of Account General of the Federation. K. Office of Special Advisor on Project Monitoring in the Presidency. Chapter 3 Finance Officers of Government 1. Content 1. Purpose 2. Introduction 3. Account General of the Federation, AGF 4. Powers of the Accountant General of the Federation 5. Functions of the Accountant General of the Federation, AGF 6. The Auditor General for the Federation 7. Powers of the Auditor General for the Federation 8. Accounting Officers, the functions of the accounting officer, 10. Sub accounting officer, 11. Functions of the sub accounting officer, 12. Revenue collector, 13. Functions of the revenue collector, 14. Impressed holder, 15. What is an impressed, 16. Types of impressed, 17. Conditions for operating an impressed, 18. Officer controlling expenditure, 19 functions of officer controlling expenditure, 20 vote book of departmental vote expenditure allocation book, DVEA book, 21 reasons for keeping a vote book, 22 definition of terms, 23 chapter review, 24 worked examples. Finance officers of government. Purpose. After studying these chapters, Readers should be able to a identify the various finance officers, their powers, functions, and responsibilities, and b use appropriate terminologies in public sector accounting and finance. Introduction. Chapter one of the Financial Regulations (FR) lists the following government officers that have financial responsibilities: a Accountant General of the Federation (AGF), b Auditor General for the Federation (OGF). C. Accounting Officer AO. D. Sub Accounting Officer SAO. E. Revenue Collector RC. F. Impress Order IH. And G. Officer Controlling Expenditure OCE. Account Gen Accountant General of the Federation AGF. In accordance with government financial regulations, the Accountant General of the Federation is the Chief Accounting Officer of the Receipts and Payments of the Federation, saddled with the responsibility of general supervision of the accounts of all ministries and extra ministerial departments and the preparation of annual financial statements of the nation, as may be required by the Honorable Minister of Finance. He or his responsibility res he or his representative shall have access at any reasonable time to all documents, information and records that are needed for the, depart of, for the preparation of the accounts of every ministry and extra ministerial department, powers or duties of the Accountant General of the Federation. According to government financial regulations, 106-2009 edition, the Accountant General of the Federation has the following duties. A. Power of access to books and records of all ministries at any reasonable time. B. Power to request for information and explanation necessary for his duties. C. Power to carry out special ad hoc investigations in any ministry. Note. Reference to ministries include extra ministerial departments.
portions of the Accountant General of the Federation (AGF). The functions of the Accountant General of the Federation as contained in Financial Regulations 107 include A. Serves as the, as the Chief Accounting Officer for the receipts and payments of the Government of the Federation. B. Supervise the accounts of Federal Ministries, Extra Ministerial Offices, and other arms of government. C. Collate, prepare, and publish statutory financial statements of the Federal government and any other statements of account required by the Minister of Finance. D. Manage federal government investments. E. Maintain and operate the accountants of the Consolidated Revenue Fund, Development Fund, Contingencies Fund, and other public funds and provide cash backing for the operations of the federal government. F. Maintain and operate the Federation accounts. G. Establish and supervise federal base offices in each state capital of the Federation. H. Conduct routine and in depth inspection of the books of accounts of federal ministries, extra ministerial offices, and other arms of government to ensure compliance with rules, regulations, and policy decisions of the federal government. I. Approve and ensure compliance with accounting codes, internal audit guide and stock verification manuals of federal ministries, extra ministerial offices, and other arms of government. J. Investigate cases of fraud, loss of funds, assets, and store items and other financial malpractices in ministries or extra ministerial offices and other arms of government. K. Provide financial guidelines through the insurance of treasury circulars the federal ministries or all ministerial offices and other arms of government to ensure strict compliance with existing control systems for the collection, custody, and disbursement of public funds and stores. L. Supervise and control the computerization of the accounting system in the federal ministries, extra ministerial offices, and other arms of government. M. Carry out revenue monitoring accounting page and issue officially approved forms bearing treasury numbers for use in all federal ministries, special ministerial offices, and other arms of government to ensure uniformity. O. Formulate the accounting policy of the federal government. P. Service public debt and loans and Q. Organize training of accounts and internal audit personnel in all federal ministries, extra ministerial offices, and other arms of government. The Auditor General for the Federation of GF. In accordance with the provisions of government financial regulations, this is the officer responsible under the 1999 Constitution of the Federation for the audit and reports on the public accounts of the Federation, including all persons and bodies established by law, entrusted with the receipts, custody, issue, sale, transfer or delivery of any stamps, securities, stores, or other property of the government of the Federation, and for the certification of the annual accounts of the nation. He is given free hand to examine the accounts in such a manner as he may deem fit. At the end of the audit, is expected to write a report stating whether, in his opinion, a. the account has been properly kept, b. all public funds have been fully accounted for, and the rules and procedures applied are sufficient to secure effective check on the assessment, collection, and proper allocation of revenue, c. monies has been expended for the purposes for which they were appropriated, and the expenditure has been made as authorized. According to Government Financial Regulations 109-2009 edition, the Editor General for the Federation shall carry out the following statutory functions. Financial audit in accordance with extant laws in order to Determine whether government account has been satisfactory and faithfully kept. 
appropriation audit to ensure that funds are expended as appropriated by National Assembly. Financial control audit to ensure that laid down procedures are being observed in trending contracts and stock keeping with a view to preventing waste, five bridge, and extravagance. Value for money performance audits to ascertain the level of economy, efficiency, and effectiveness derived from government projects and programs. Two, the scope of work of the Auditor General include audit of the books account and records of federal ministries, extra ministerial offices and other arms of government, vetting, commenting and certifying audited accounts of all parastatals and government statutory corporations in accordance with the constitution of the federation, audit of the accounts of federal government establishments located in all states of the federation, including all areas councils in the federal capital territory, Abuja. Audit of the accountant's general annual financial statements, auditing and certifying the federation account, deliberation, verification, and reporting on reported cases of loss of funds, stores, plants, and equipment as stipulated in financial regulations. Pre and post auditing of the payment of pensions and gratuities of the retired military and civilian personnel. Periodic checks of all government statutory corporations, commissions, authorities, agencies, including all persons and bodies established by an act of the National Assembly, and revenue audit of all government institutions, accounting officers. In accordance with government financial regulations, accounting officers are the permanent secretaries of the ministries and head of extra ministerial departments. They are saddled with the responsibility of the day-to-day -day financial activities of the ministries and extra ministerial departments. Functions of the accounting officer. The term accounting officer means the permanent secretary of any ministry or the head of extra ministerial office and other arms of government who is in full control of and is responsible for human material and financial resources which are critical inputs in the management of an organization. The accounting officer shall 1. Be responsible for safeguarding of public fund and regularity and property of expenditure under its control. 2. Observe and comply fully with the checks and balances built out in the existing financial regulations which govern receipts and disbursement of public funds and other assets entrusted to this care and shall be liable for any breach thereof. And 3. Note that its accountability does not cease by virtue of his living office, and that he may be called upon at any time to account for his tenure as accounting officer. The functions of the accounting officer shall include a. Ensuring that proper body and accounting systems are established and maintained to enhance internal control, accountability, and transparency. b. Ensuring that the essential management control tools are put in place to minimize waste and fraud. c. Rendering mon monthly and other financial accounting returns and transcripts to the Accountant General of the Federation required by the financial regulations. D. Ensuring the safety and proper maintenance of all government assets under its care. E. Ensuring personal appearance before the Public Accounts Committee to answer audit queries to Ministry and Extra Ministerial Department or Agency. F. Ensuring accurate collection and accounting for all public monies received and expended. G. Ensuring prudence in the expenditure of public funds. H. Ensuring that proper assessment, fees, rates, and charges are made where necessary. I. Ensuring that internal guides, rules, regulations, procedures are adequately provided for the security and effective check on the assessments collection and accounting for revenue. J. Ensuring that any losses of revenue are promptly reported and investigated. K. Ensuring that all revenue collected are compared with the budgeted estimate with a view to highlighting the variances, positive or otherwise, and the reason 
for them and L ensuring that any revenue collected and not spent be remitted to the appropriate authorities promptly in compliance with a special rule under the Public Procurement Act or accounting officers of ministries, extra ministerial offices and other arms of government are hereby charged with the following responsibilities. They shall A. Preside over the activities of the attendance board for the proper planning and evaluation of tenders and execution of procurement. B. Ensure that adequate appropriation is available for, pre for procurement in their annual budget. C. Integrate their entity's procurement expenditure into its yearly budget. D. Ensure the establishment of a procurement planning committee over whose activities they shall preside. E. Constitute a procurement evaluation committee for the efficient evaluation of tenders. F. Constitute a procurement committee. G. Render annual returns of procurement records to the Bureau of Public Procurement. H. Liaise with the Bureau of Public Procurement to ensure the implementation of its regulations. And I. Ensure compliance with the provisions of the Public Procurement Act by the organizations failing which they shall be personally liable for any breach or contravention thereof, whether or not such breach or contravention was caused by them imposing their subordinates or any other person to whom they may have delegated their responsibilities. Sub Accounting Officer. In accordance with government relations, its officer is entrusted with the receipts, custody, and disbursement of public funds. It is required to maintain one of the recognized cash books, together with some other books that may be required by the Accountant General. Example includes Sub-Treasurer of the Federation, Federal Pay Officer FPO, Police Pay Officer PPO, Custom Area Pay Officer CAPO, Director of Finance and Accounts DFA, etc functions of the sub-accounting officer. According to government regulations, the functions of the sub-accounting officer are as follows. A. Ensuring that the proper system of accounts as prescribed by the accountant general is established. B. Ensuring exercises supervision over the receipts of public revenue and ensuring prompt collection. C promptly bringing into account under the proper heads and subheads of the estimates or other approved clarification or receipts, whether revenue or otherwise. D. Ensuring that proper provision is made for safekeeping of public funds, securities, stamps, receipts, tickets, licenses, and other valuable documents. E. Exercising supervision over all officers under its authority who are entrusted with the receipts and expenditure of public funds and taking precautions by taking putting in place efficient checks against the occurrence of fraud, embezzlement, and carelessness. F. Supervising the expenditure of government and ensuring that no payment is made without proper authorization. G. Promptly charging in his accounts under proper heads and subheads or disbursements. H. Checking all cash and stamps in his care to reconcile the amount to the balances in the cash book and stamp register. I. Promptly bringing to account as a receipt any cash or stamp found in excess of the balance shown in the cash book or stamp register. J. Making good any minor deficiency not caused by theft or fraud in the cash or stamps for which he is responsible and thereafter reporting in writing to the Minister of Finance. K. Promptly preparing such financial statements as are required by law or the Minister of Finance. I. Maintenance of cash book. Treasury cash book. One of the main functions of sub-accounting officer stated above is the maintenance of treasury cash book which is expressly stated in FR 201 that a, a sub-accounting officer should keep a treasury cash book. 
the treasury cash book is a permanent record of accounts which is used to record all receipts revenue and payments made by an organization this treasury cash book is divided into two parts namely debit and credit sites and each side contains eight columns totaling 16 columns revenue and receipts are recorded on the debit on the debit side while payments and expenditure are entered on the credit side with particular for all entries. The treasury cash book is to be balanced daily with cash specification shown for each day. The signation of the head of account or central pay officer will be taken as certifying the accuracy as well as correctness of the entries and cash balance. Illustration Here we are giving example of treasury cash book. Revenue Coletto. This is an officer apart from a sub accounting officer who keeps official receipts and collects specified forms of revenue on behalf of the government. He is expected to keep a cash book. The revenue collector must not expend money out of his collection. He therefore has to account for the collections received intact. Functions of the revenue collector. A. Exercising supervision over the receipts of public revenue and ensuring their prompt lodgement into the banks. B. Promptly reflecting in the accounts under the proper heads and subheads of the estimates all monies collected by him on behalf of government. C. Seeing that proper provision is made for the custody of public funds and securities. D. Supervision of all the officers under his authority who are entrusted with the receipts, custody, and disbursement of public funds. E. Maintenance of efficient internal checks against the occurrence of malpractices. F. Checking all cash and stamps in, in his care, agreeing the amounts with the balances in the cash book and stamps register. G. Make it good any monitored deficit which is not caused by theft or fraud and reporting accordingly in writing to the appropriate officer, e.g. Minister of Finance. Here we are shown the format of revenue collector's cash book and two illustrations are given with suggested solutions. Impressed order. According to government regulation, this is an officer, other than a sub-accounting officer, who is charged with the disbursement of public money, whose ventures cannot be presented immediately to a sub-accounting officer. He has to keep an impressed cash book. What is an impressed? An impressed is defined as a small amount of money set aside to meet petty cash payments. The ventures of which cannot be presented to a sub-accounting officer immediately. An impress order is therefore a petty cashier, cashier who handles such fluids of money and keeps necessary records for restoration to the earlier amount granted at the appropriate time. Types of impress. There are two types of impress, namely a standing impress. This impress is operated from the commencement to the end of the financial year, 1st January to 31 December of each year. On the last working day of the year, an account is rendered and all unspent balances lapse. B. Special impress. In this impress is operated from the commencement of the financial year until the objective for which it is set up have been achieved. Upon the retainment of such objectives, an account to be rendered and all unspent balances shall lapse. Conditions for operating an impress. Any ministry which intends to operate an impress has to apply in writing to the Accountant General of the Federation stating the amount and purpose for which it is required. D. The Accountant General of the Federation and the Accounting Officer of the Ministry of Extra Ministerial 
or extra ministerial department will issue a press after the Minister of Finance has conveyed the authority in the annual general impress warrant. Illustrations of example of impressed holder's cash book. Officer controlling expenditure. This is an officer in charge of the various vote aids of each ministry or extra ministerial department. Saddled with the responsibility of monitoring government expenditure and ensuring that there is no extra budgetary spending. Functions of officer controlling expenditure. A. Supervision of government expenditure and ensuring that no payment is made without proper authority. B. Promptly charging his account under proper heads and subheads all disbursements. C. Ensuring that all books are correctly posted and kept up to date. D. Producing when required by the Accountant General and the Auditor General or cash stamps ETC in his custody. E. Ensuring that funds are available under the appropriate head and subheads to meet payments of specific ventures. F. Effective monitoring of government expenditure. G. Ensuring that there is no extra budgetary spending. H. Ensuring that there is adequate security over the custody of public funds. I. Maintenance of the vote book. Vote book or Departmental Vote Expenditure Allocation Book, DVEAB. A vote book is a memorandum account book used for monetary government expenditure and ensuring that there is no extra budgetary spending. It is the duty of every officer controlling expenditure to keep a vote book. A vote book has 15 columns. At the top right hand side of the vote book, the head, the subhead, and the type of service are indicated. On the right hand side, the authority and the authorized amount will be written. That is PGW slash AGW and AIA number and the amount should be stated. On no account should two types of services be recorded together. Example, subhead tree should not be made to accommodate on any other services such as subhead four. Reasons for keeping a vote book. A. For effective monitoring of government expenditure. B. To show uncommitted balance at a glance. C. To highlight government creditors or liabilities. 4. To ensure that funds are available in appropriate heads and subheads to meet payments due. E. To ensure that there is no extra budgetary spending. Here we have an example of a vote book and illustrations on it with suggested solution. Definition of terms. This may be discussed as follows. Below the line accounts. These are the accounts created and controlled by the Accountant General of the Federation, of which at the time of preparation of the budget, the exact amount of income receivable and expenditure incurable cannot be reasonably ascertained. The expenditure under the account is not budgeted for in the estimates. Examples include touring, touring and spectacle advances, loans and deposits. In this case, deposits refer to money held on behalf of third parties. The term also includes remittance and cash transfers in respect of the Nigerian Army, Police and Paramilitary Organizations. Federal Pay Officer This is an officer who is in charge of a federal pay office in the state. He performs the same functions as those of a sub-accounting officer. However, although the sub-accounting officer is at the headquarters of each ministry, the federal pay officer handles the processing of all financial transactions between the federal and the state governments, the local government councils, and all branches of the federal government ministries in the states wherever located. Above the line accounts. These are the expenditures budgeted for in the estimate. 
and the sign of preparation of the budget, they can reasonably be ascertained as to the exact amount of income receivable and expenditure incurable. Examples of costs which may be budgeted for are salaries and overhead expenses. Revenue items anticipated include collections for customs and exercise duties, financial regulations, or accounting manual. They are the rules governing the management of public funds. The rules deal with the procedures to be adapted for the receipts and disbursement of public funds, and how to ensure accountability. Financial regulations could be regarded as the accounting manual of government, as they could be regarded as the accounting manuals of government, as they could state all the guidelines, rules, and instructions to be followed to ensure legal and wide spending. Budgetary control concept. The concept simply states that government should not undertake any action without any pro budget for it. The concept assumes that all government revenue and expenditure must be budgeted for. Token vote. It is a notional provision for a head or subhead of an expenditure or revenue in an estimate. Token vote is often represented by the symbol 10E. It is a reminder to provide money for the activity function as soon as possible. Account current. This is the balance on account between two or more persons, principal and his agent, showing what is due from one person to another. Account currents are often used to take care of the transactions between the federal and state governments and their agencies. Children's Separation Domicile Allowance, SDR. This is an allowance paid if an officer is separated from his children as a result of the following developments. A. If he is an expatriate officer. B. Where an officer is being posted to serve overseas. Chapter Review. This chapter dealt with the various powers and functions of the finance officers of government and key instructions which they use and definitions of terms in government accounting. It stressed the importance of the powers and functions of the accountant general and those of the auditor general. What examples? Questions 1. Ministers, commissioners, directors, general and chairmen of local government councils we are made accounting officers by the Civil Service and Local Government Reform Act 43 of 1988. Required. Define the word accounting officer. List the functions of an accounting officer. Suggested solution. 1A. An accounting officer is a permanent secretary of each ministry or head of an extra ministerial department. B. The functions of the accounting officer are 1. Maintenance of proper book of accounts. 2. Establishment of functional system of internal control. 3. Establishment of internal audit department as an integral part of the internal control system. 4. Ensuring the revenue is collected at, at when due. 5. Ensuring that all money collected is properly accounted for. 6. Supervising all officers entrusted with the receipts, custody, and disbursement of public funds. 7. Ensuring that there are adequate securities over the custody of government funds. Chapter 4 Sources of Government Revenue Content 1. Purpose 2. Introduction 3. Government Revenue and Sources 4. Revenue Collection Agencies in Nigeria 5. Sources and Classification of Government Revenue in Nigeria Six, Federation Accounts Allocation Committee, FAAC. Seven, State Joint Local Government Accounts Allocation Committee. Eight, Sources of Revenue Payable to the Federation Account. Nine, Federal Government Account or Consolidated Revenue Fund. Ten, Value Added Tax, VAT. Eleven, Development Fund. Twelve, Contingency Fund. Thirteen, Chapter Review. Fourteen, Worked Examples. Sources of Government Revenue. Purpose. After studying this chapter, readers should be able to A. Identify the general sources of government revenue B. Discuss the major revenue collection agencies of the government C. List the sources and classification of government revenue in Nigeria 
and their group is into the consolidated revenue fund the federation account the development fund and the contingency fund d trace the transfer of appropriation from the federation accounts and the consolidated revenue fund into the development fund and contingency funds and e distinguish the different revenue fund or accounts and prepare them with relevant information introduction government requires revenue to perform in various functions hence government strives to generate the revenue that it requires this chapter therefore discusses the sources of government revenue generally and specifically in Nigeria. Government revenue and sources. Government revenue refers to the income generated by the government through various incomes inside and outside the particular government. The following are the general sources of revenue of various governments. A. Taxation is a compulsory levy imposed by the government where no direct benefit is received by citizens from the government. The levy is usually payable at different rates depending on the nature of economic activity conducted by an individual or firm. Fees. These are payments made by users of public services on a cost sharing basis. C. Fines. Refers to the penalties imposed by government against law breaches, that is, any person or firm from which has been proved guilty by law must be exposed to specific fines or as compensation for the destruction made by the person of fame and the collected amounts being revenue for the government. D. Grant Refer to a, to a non-payable money received by the government from another government with the aim of helping such government either to improve or to start a project which is of great importance to the society of such government. E foreign investment. Sometimes, government may decide to invest beyond its boundary, provided there is a proof of for sustainable and profitability cash flow. The obtained amount after operation constitutes revenue for the particular government. F. Public debt or borrowing becomes an important source of economic income to the government when revenue collected from taxes and other sources is not adequate to cover government expenditure. So borrowing become more necessary in terms of financial crisis and emergencies such, such as war, drought, etc. Public debt may be raised internally or externally. Internal debt refers to public debt floated within the country, while external debt refers to loans floated outside the country. G sales of national assets. Selling national assets through privatization programs has constituted a significant source of government revenue across the globe. Revenue from this source is usually used to improve finances or invest in new infrastructure, infrastructure and other key priorities. Revenue collection agencies in Nigeria. Several agencies are responsible for revenue collections from the various sources we have discussed for the government in Nigeria. The major ones are discussed as follows. 1. Nigeria National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC. NNPC came into being on the 1st of April 1977 through Decree No. 33, following the dissolution and measures of the then Nigeria National Oil Corporation, NNOC, established by Decree No. 18 of 1971, and the Federal Ministry of Petroleum Resources, the establishment of NNPC was meant to optimize the use of scarce indigenous human resources available in the oil industry. NNPC has sole responsibility for upstream and downstream development and is also charged with regulating and supervising the oil industry on behalf of the Nigerian government. In 1988, the corporation was commercialized into 11 strategic business units conveying the entire spectrum of oil industry operations, exploration and production, gas development, refining, distribution, petrochemicals, engineering, and commercial investments. Its specific functions and roles include inter-ally, A, exploration and production, refining, purchasing, and marketing of petroleum, its products, and by-products.
B. Providing and operating pipelines, tanker ships, and other facilities for the conveyance of crude oil. C. Constructing, equipping, and maintaining tank farms. D. Research and development. And E. Doing anything for the purpose of giving effect to agree agreements entered into by the federal government with a view to seeking participation by the government or the cooperation in activities connected with petroleum. Federal Inland Revenue Service, FIRS. The Federal Inland Revenue Services Service started as part of a colonial task organization under the name the Inland Revenue Department of Anglophone West Africa. The department's scope of administration covered Nigeria, Ghana, Sierra Leone, and the Gambia. In 1943, the Nigerian Inland Revenue Department was carved out of the Inland Revenue Department of Anglophone West Africa and established as an autonomous body under the supervision of the Commissioner of Income Tax. Under the old tax administration structure as prescribed by the company's income tax at volume 4, cap 60, laws of the Federal Federation of Nigeria, 1990, the Federal Inland Revenue Service, FIRS, was the operating arm of the Federal Board of Inland Revenue, FBIR. However, Federal Inland Revenue Service Establishment Act No. 13 of 2007 formally established the Federal Inland Revenue Service. The same act also established the Federal Inland Revenue Service Board to have overall supervision of the service. This board replaced the Federal Board of Inland Revenue. The FIRS is to control and administer the different taxes, companies, income tax, at petroleum profits, at tax at, and the value added tax at. Personal income tax at, in respect of residents of the Federal Capital Territory, members of Nigerian Police Force, members of Armed Forces of Nigeria, as well as staff of Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Non-Residents, and Capital Gains Tax Act and Stamp Duty Act in respect of residents of the Federal Capital Territory, corporate bodies, and non-residents. And laws specified in the first schedule or other laws made from time to time by the National Assembly or other regulations made there under by the government of the Federation and to account for all taxes collected accordingly the FIRS has been striving to operate a transparent and an efficient tax system that optimizes tax revenue collection and voluntary compliance. State Board of Internal Revenue Service, SBIRS. At the state level, the Personal Income Tax Act 1993 established the State Board of Internal Revenue Service SBIRS, with responsibility for personal income taxes of individuals and non corporate bodies, except for personal income taxes of individuals and non corporate bodies, except residents of the Federal Capital Territory. Members of Nigerian Police Force, members of Armed Forces of Nigeria, as well as staff of Ministry of Foreign Affairs and non residents. In addition, it has responsibility for capital gains tax act and stamp duty act, except those aspects relating to residents of the federal capital territory, corporate bodies, and non residents. Generally, the State Board of Inland Revenue Service has the power to and be responsible for a assessing, collecting, and accounting for all taxes, fees, and levies in the state. Commissioner of Finance is to prescribe the manner the board is to account for the taxes, fees, and the levies collected. B. Supervise the collection of all revenues 
due to the state government with other ministries, extra ministerial departments, fire starters, and government companies. C. Revise all obsolete rates collectible by the board and initiate re review and advice and advise the governor on it. D. Liars on tax and revenue matters with the federal government directly through the Joint Tax Board and make recommendations where appropriate to the Joint Tax Force on tax policy, tax reform, tax registration, tax treaties, and exemption as may be required from time to time. To minister the provisions of the Personal Income Tax Act 1993 as amended and relevant tax laws in the state. F. To generally control the management of the service on matters of policy subject to the provisions of the edit and imposing discipline on employees of the state internal revenue service. Department of Petroleum Resources, DPR. At the onset, petroleum matters were handled by the hydrocarbon section of the Ministry of Lagos Affairs, which reported directly to the general to the Governor General. The unit kept records on matters relating to exploration and importation of petroleum products. It also enforced safety and other regulations on matters which were then mostly product importation and distribution. As the activities of the petroleum industry expanded, the unit was, was upgraded to a petroleum division within the Ministry of Mines and Power. The petroleum division grew to become the Department of Petroleum Resources in 1970. In 1971, a new body, the Nigerian National Oil Corporation, NNOC, was created to handle direct commercial operational activities in the oil industry on behalf of the federal government, while the Department of Petroleum Resources in the Federal Ministry of Mines and Power continued to exercise statutory supervision and control of the industry. In 1975, the department was upgraded to a ministry and named the Ministry of Petroleum and Energy, which was later renamed the Ministry of Petroleum Resources. Decree 33 of 1977 merged the Ministry of Petroleum Resources and the Nigerian National Oil Corporation, NNOC, to form the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, in order to converse, conserve the dense case manpower in the oil industry. This decree also created the Petroleum Inspectorate as an integral part of the NNPC and entrusted it with the regulation of the petroleum industry. In 1985, the Ministry of Petroleum Resources was re-established, but the Petroleum Inspectorate remained within the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation until March 1988, when the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation was reorganized. By this reorganization, the Petroleum Inspectorate was exercised, excised from the NNPC and transferred to the Ministry of Petroleum Resources as a technical arm and renamed the DPR. DPR has the statutory responsibility of ensuring compliance to petroleum laws, regulations, and guidelines in the oil and gas industry. The discharge of these responsibilities involves monitoring of, oper of operations at drilling sites, producing wells, production platforms, and flow stations, crude oil export terminals, refineries, storage depots, pump stations, retail outlets, any other locations 
where petroleum is either stored or sold, and all pipelines carrying crude oil, natural gas, and petroleum products while carrying out the following functions, among others. A. Supervising all petroleum industry operations being carried out under licenses and leases in the country. B. Monitoring the petroleum industry operations to ensure that they are in line with national goals and aspirations, including those relating to flow down and domestic gas supply obligations. C. Ensuring that health, safety, and environment regulations conform to national and international best oil field practice. D. Maintaining records on petroleum industry operations, particularly on matters relating to petroleum reserves, production, exports, licenses, and leases. E. Advising government and relevant government agencies on technical matters and public policies that may have impact on the administration and petroleum activities. F. Processing industry applications for leases, licenses, and permits. G. Ensuring timely and accurate payments of rent, royalties, and other revenue due to government. And H. Maintaining and administering the National Data Repository, NDR. Nigerian Custom Services, NCS. Nigerian Custom Service, a paramilitary organization, has existed since a little over a century ago under the British colonial administration when Mr. T. A. Wall was appointed in the year 1891 as the Director General of Customs for the Collection of Inland Revenue in Niger Coast Protectorate. His appointment formalized the duties which the department has been performing under the Royal Niger Company. The name, the Department of Customs and Exercise, emerged in 1922 when the first comprotola of customs and exercise, Federation of Nigeria was appointed. Towards the end of 1945, the Customs and Exercise Preventive Service was established under the leadership of Mr. Nico A. Brickton. The Nigeria Customs Service statutory functions can be broadly classified into two main categories, namely core and other functions, call functions. The two core functions are A, collection of revenue, that is, import and exercise duties, and accounting for same. B, prevention and suppression of smuggling, other functions. The category of other function include A, Implementation of government fiscal measures. B. Generation of statistical data for planning purpose. C. Trade facilitation. D. Implementation of bilateral and multilateral agreements entered into by government. E. Collection of levies and charges. F. Collaborate functions with government agencies, including CBN, police. NDLEA, SON, NAFTA, FIRS, ETC. In addition to this core and group of other functions, the service also supports the combating of A. Illegal commercial activities and trade in illicit goods, e.g., imports of fake and substandard goods, B. Infraction on intellectual property rights, C. Illegal international trade in endangered species. D. Illegal trade in arms and ammunition. E. Money laundering. F. Tra traffic of illicit drugs. D. Illegal trade in cultural artifacts. H. Portation of pornographic materials. I. Portation of toxic and hazardous 
substances, sources of and classifications of government revenue in Nigeria. The federal government derives its revenue from different sources kept in a consolidated revenue fund. Prior to the 1989 budget, the federal government derived its revenue through the following heads. Head 1, indirect taxes. Head 2, direct taxes. Head 3, mining. Head 6, direct allocation. Head 7, direct taxes. Pay. Head 8, licenses and land revenue. Head 9, mining, solid materials. Head 10, Fuse, head 11, earnings and sales, head 12, rent of government property, head 13, interest and repayment general, head 14, interest and repayment, bracket, state government, head 15, reimbursement, head 16, armed forces, head 17, miscellaneous. However, with the 1989 budget, the federal government revenue sources were classified into two groups, A, Federation Account Revenue Heads, and B, Federal Government Account Revenue Heads. The above classification was again modified in 1994 fiscal year as follows, A, Federation Account Revenue Heads, B, Value Added Tax VAT, and C. Federal Government Account Revenue Heads. Federal Account Federation Account Revenue Heads. The Federation Account was established by Section 162 of the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The Federation Account is one into which shall be paid all revenue collected by the government of the Federation except the proceeds from the payee of the personnel of the armed forces of the Federation, the Nigerian Police Force, Foreign Service Officers, and residents of the Federal Capital Authority, Abuja. The Federation account is a distributable pool account from which allocations are made to the Federal, State, and Local Government Councils on such terms and in a manner prescribed by the law. Currently, the figure in the pool is distributed using the revenue allocation formulas over the years as shown in the table below. They are shown the revenue allocation formulas. Federation Account Allocation Committee, FAAC. Federation Account Allocation Committee, FAAC, was established up by allocation of revenue, Federation Account ETC, at CAP A15 LFN 2004 to deliberate upon and allocate funds from the Federation Account to the three towns of government, that is, the federal, state, and local governments. The Federation Account Allocation Committee, FAAC, meeting is normally divided into two sections, namely A, technical section, B, plenary section. Membership of Federation Account Allocation Committee, FAAC, technical section. A, Accountant General of the Federation, Chairman. B, State Accountant General. C, representatives of the various agencies. 1. Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC. 2. Federal Inland Revenue Service, FIRS. 3. Nigerian Customs Service, NCS. 4. Department of Petroleum Resources, DPR. 5. Revenue Mobilization, Allocation and Fiscal Commission. 6. Federal, Finance of Federal Ministry of Finance. 7. Central Bank of Nigeria, CPN. 8. National Planning Commission. 9. Office of State and Local Government Affairs. 10. Office of the Federal of the Vice President. 11. Directorate of Military Pension. 12. Office of Head of Service of the Federation. 13. Department of Civil Pensions.
functions of technical section. Okay, to consider the accounting in terms of revenue collecting agencies, B, to deliberate and consider the revenue available for distribution. C, to make recommendation to the plenary section for the adoption of the revenue to be shared to the three tiers of the government. D, to consider any other issues sent from the plenary section, membership of Federation Accounts Allocation Committee, FAAC, plenary section. A, the Honorable Minister of Finance, Chairman, the State Minister, Commissioner of Finance, the Accountant General of the Federation, the State Accountant General, representatives of the 13 organizations mentioned under membership of Federation Accounts Allocation Commission, FAAC, technical section, functions of FAAC. A, to ensure that allocations made to the state from the Federation Accounts are promptly and fully paid into the treasury of each component on such basis and terms prescribed by law. B, to submit annual reports of its performance or activities to the National Assembly, State Joint Local Government Accounts Allocation Committee. This committee was set up to ensure equitable distribution of the statutory allocations to local governments from the Federation account and 10% of the internally generated revenue of the appropriate state governments as shared to the beneficiaries in accordance with the 1999 Constitution using stipulated criteria which include equality, population, primary school enrollment, and internally generated revenue. Composition A. The Permanent Secretary for Local Government Affairs B. All the chairmen of the local governments in the state C. Representative of the Accountant General of the state and D. The Federal Pay Officer in the state Sources of revenue payable to the Federation Accounts X. These are A. Ed 1. Direct taxes These are payable by the individuals and firms such as company income tax, petroleum profit tax, capital gain tax, bank duty assessment, and personal income tax of foreigners residing in Nigeria. B. Head 2. Indirect taxes. These are taxes on goods and services in form of custom and exercise duties, forfeiture penalties, VAT, etc. C. Head 3. Mining. These are oil pipeline lances fees, rent of mining rights, mining fees, varieties on minerals, NNPC earnings from direct fees, penalties for gas plague, and rent of oil where federal government account or consolidated revenue from um, the Consolidated Revenue Fund, CRF, was established by Section 80 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, except those revenue items which are specifically designated to other funds. All others shall be paid into the Consolidated Revenue Fund. The various sources of income credit, credited to the CRF, as well as charges geared to, are shown in the diagram below. Analysis of the various sources of revenue payable to CRF. Analysis of the various sources of income are given below. A. Head C. Direct allocation from the Federation account at a prevailing rate. B. Head 7. Direct taxes. This includes payee of the, of the armed forces and police personnel, foreign service officers and residents of the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja. C. Head 8. License and Internal Revenue. These are realized from the issues of licenses, e.g. arms and ammunition license fees, goldsmith license fees, radio and television license fees, gold dealers license fees.
D H nine mining. This include mining fees, rent of mineral lands, royalties on gold, tin, iron, ore, and coal mines. E H ten fees. Fees. These are fees received on services rendered by government officials, e.g., court fees, court fines, and medical fees. F. Head 11. Earnings and sales. Earnings and sales are derived from the use and subsequent disposal of government property, e.g., sales of stores, publications and stamps, commission on money order, and bondage on poster orders. G. Head 12. Rent of government property. The incomes include rent on government quarters, land, and buildings. H. Head 13. Interest and payable pay, repayment that is general. These are interest and repayments of loans granted to individuals by the government, corporations, and government companies. An example is the repayment of motor vehicle loans. I. Head 14. Interest and repayment for state. There are interest and repayment of loans granted to the state governments. J. Head 15. Armed forces. The sales of armed forces properties, such as old vehicles and stores, constitute revenue. K. Head 16. Reimbursements. These are refunds for services rendered to the state and local government councils, public corporation, and other statutory bodies by the federal government officers. Examples are reimbursement of audit fees and refunds of overpayments made to government workers. L. Head 17. Miscellaneous. These are other sources of revenue apart from those stated above. Examples are overpayments, refunded, lapsed, deposits. All the revenues discussed above are paid into the Consolidated Revenue Fund. Charges to the Consolidated Revenue Fund. These are expenditure items chargeable to the Consolidated Revenue Fund. The charges to the Consolidated Revenue Fund are grouped as follows. A. All recurrent expenditure heads in the approved estimates. Example, personnel cost, overhead cost, and servicing of national debts.